Great. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for turning up on the Friday. It's really good to have you all here. Um, it's going to be the last one of these lectures for a little while. So for those of you that have been coming regularly, we really appreciate it. This is your first one. I hope you really enjoyed this lecture too. Now, in terms of kind of growth areas, I, I think our guest today is probably really at the forefront of one of the ones I, I can't think of anything that's growing so much in terms of an area of study, and that is math, stats, and data science. This is really something that is, is so important in the world at the moment and, and so important uh, in terms of a skill set to be developed. So we're very lucky here to have um, uh, Evangelis Evangelou from the University of Bath, who works on the course that deals with um, data science. Um, he's going to be telling you a lot about his course. And obviously, this is a great chance for you guys to ask some really interesting questions about this really interesting field of study. As always, if you want a question uh, uh, put to the professor, just please put it into the chat function here, and then we'll be able to ask him at the end and go through them all. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting one. So if I can hand over to you, um, Vangelis, would you, would you like to take over and um, tell us a bit about your program and, uh, and what you do? Hi, thank you, Joseph. Hi, everyone. It's good to meet you. And thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, right. So, yeah, I'm a Dr. Evangelos Evangelou. So I'm a lecturer at the University of Bath in the Department of Mathematical Sciences. Uh, I'm also a researcher in uh, statistics. So I especially I teach, uh, I research in spatial statistics. And of course, I also teach statistics to our undergraduate and postgraduate students. But I'm also the admissions tutor, which means I decide on the uh, admissions strategy of the department. And I'm here to talk to you about the mathematics, statistics, and data science program that we are offering. This is a new program which we are starting next year. Uh, so first, I thought I would say a little bit about Bath. I'm sure you've been to the UK before, um, and you've seen, uh, you know where London is. Uh, so Bath, as you can see, is uh, west of London. So it's at the southwest uh, Engl England, uh, part of England, uh, very close to Bristol. And it's quite accessible by land um, through an airport, through Heathrow Airport. So it's not very far, like a couple of hours to Heathrow Airport. And of course, Bristol Airport is very close. So we're in a, in a nice part of the country. And this is the picture of the university campus, uh, as you can see here in the front, with the city of Bath in the background. And the Department of Mathematical Sciences is where you see the green dot there. Um, and we've got, we have the sports facilities here at the bottom left, and uh, the student dormitories at the bottom right, and the, where the departments are, where the teaching rooms are um, a bit to the north, uh, to a bit to the middle of the picture. Um, and this is actually a picture of the department, the yellow building that you see in the background there is where my, our offices are. Uh, my office is on the fourth floor there. Um, so the city of Bath, um, you might have heard of it, is a very small city, but um, a university town. We have uh, two universities in Bath. And so the university to, to actual residence population ratio is uh, quite high. Um, it's a very safe city and doesn't have a, a lot of crime. So it's quite nice to live in and a lot of activities going on uh, relevant to university students. Uh, the campus is also very convenient. As you saw from the previous picture, it's a bit far from the city, but it has a lot of convenient uh, and built, uh, facilities such as a bank, post office. We have a lot of lots of shops and cafes where you can uh, meet with your friends. Our library is open 24 hours a day where you can go there and study. We also have a chaplaincy center where you can use for praying and also very good sports facilities as you saw from the previous picture. So here I'm, I'm here to talk to you about our degree in mathematics, statistics and data science. So of course it involves, as the name suggests, three elements. It involves mathematics, statistics, and data science. So of course, if you like maths, uh, then this is a good program for you to consider. 
and especially if you want to apply maths to real data sets applications. So it's not so purely mathematical focused as our mathematics program. So it expands into statistics and computer science. Uh, so it tries to combine these three elements of mathematical um, literature. Uh, so it's, it gives you a broader view of mathematics and of course, uh, which, which strongly emphasizes the statistics element, which is very important for data science. So we believe if you want to do proper data science and understand um, what um, the theory is, uh, you have to uh, first learn mathematics and in order to develop this theory. And that's when uh, you can be innovated, innovative and, um, and really contribute to the field of data science. Uh, of course, you cannot do data science without any programming. So of course, we teach also how to do any uh, how to do programming. We use the Python programming language for that. And we also use um, we, we also teach you how to use machine learning and statistics techniques in real data problems. Um, so in terms of our, oh, does somebody have a question? Oh, I hear myself. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, in terms of our program, if you study here, you will either, you can have a three year or a four year program. So our three year program is just do three years of courses, um, first, second and third year courses. While if you do a four year program, then you have the option in your third year to do either a placement where you go and work at a company. And of course you get paid for that or where you study uh, in a different country. So you also get experience of them li living in a different country and how the education system is in that country. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you about the different courses that we teach and um, also how um, what the what the uh, third year program is uh, but before we go there I just want to say that we also offer some other degrees in uh, the department specifically we have a degree in mathematics uh, mathematical sciences mathematics and statistics as in addition to that so these are more mathematical focused programs um, for those who like to use mathematics uh, or learn mathematics as a subject and perhaps use it as um, be become teachers or work in a company as mathematicians. Um, the mathematics, statistics and data science program is more applied, but of course you can, uh, if you find that you like the more mathematical aspect of the mathematics, statistics and data science program, then you can switch to one of our other programs as well. And also you can all, you can switch from the mathematics to mathematical sciences. Math to, so every program that I have listed here is uh, possible to switch um, from, from another program within the first year. Um, so it, although the entry requirements, as you will see for mathematics, statistics and data science are more relaxed than our other three programs, uh, if you, do get uh, good high marks in our um, in the mathematics, statistics, and data science program. Then you can switch to the other programs if you like. Right. So as I said, I want to talk to you a little bit about the course. So what will you do if you come here and study uh, mathematics, statistics, and data science? Um, so the way the academic year works is we have uh, two semesters. So the first semester of, uh, so teaching will end uh, around middle of December for the first semester. And then there is a break and the students return back in January for the exams. Um, so, and then the second semester starts in February and then there are exams in uh, around May or June, depending on um, when Easter falls. 
so you will have um, a semester of 11 weeks of teaching, uh, then a break, and then exams. Uh, so that's how it works for each uh, semester. And each semester you will take five courses. We call them units here. Uh, so you will learn. So I'm going to talk about the courses that you take in the next slides. Uh, so if you take five courses, that means you will have to take five exams usually. Some courses also have coursework, so that depends. And the uh, lectures are usually two hours a week. And then there is one hour of uh, either a tutorial or a problem class or some other way of supporting um, the, uh, the lectures, which involves examples, exercises, and other activities. So it's not only just the teaching from us, it's also some additional um, activities where you learn better the material. Right, so in our first year, uh, as I want to remind you that this program involves uh, mathematics, statistics, and data science. So from the first year, we want to teach you all three elements in the course. So as you can see here from this list, we have um, some pure mathematics, such as algebra and geometry and analysis, which are um, very important element found, um, in laying the foundations of mathematics. But we also have some applied mathematics um, methods, such as um, methods and applications of mathematics and foundations of mathematics. We have some statistics courses, such as the probability and statistics. Again, this is another um, course that is uh, fu fundamental to data science. And obviously, we have uh, programming, which involves Python and R, so the two of the most popular languages for data science. And then there is the introduction to data science, which involves the data applications element that we discussed. So it's a quite comprehensive uh, first year learning the different elements of the program. Of course, um, once you finish the, um, so the, so yeah, so what I wanted to say is that um, um, all uh, the students who do the pure mathematical sciences, there they do more, um, there, there is more emphasis in the mathematics part of the unit. So they do more mathematics courses instead of, so they don't do any data science course, for example. And they, um, so th this is the difference between our different programs. Uh, right, so once you finish the first year, then you have more options depending what you like. Uh, so of course, there are some compulsory units uh, courses, but we also have some optional courses later. Um, that you can choose. Uh, so one, uh, from the compulsory courses, we teach uh, machine learning and data science. So the second level of data science and statistics, which is again, a second level of statistics from the first year. And of course you can choose some courses um, such as um, more mathematical courses, if you like, or more statistical courses um, from, you can also choose courses from other departments such as, uh, for example, from computer science, which of course is relevant to this program. Um, so such as uh, artificial intelligence and uh, data uh, structures and computer systems. And of, uh, we also offer options from dif other departments such as economics and management. So for example, you can choose accountancy, econometrics or corporate fi finance, if that's uh, the, if that's a, you think that's a, interesting to you and you're looking at, for a career in those areas. In fact, many of our students also in mathematics programs, uh, so mathematics, mathematical sciences programs also have the option to choose these units. So it's not uh, exclusive to mathematics, statistics and data science program. Um, and indeed many students choose these programs because later they go for a career in those areas. Um, so as I said, if you do um, a, a three-year program, then you will um, 
uh, do your final year in year three. But there are, we, we also offer the four-year programs. And so if you are in a four-year program, then as I said, you have the option to either do a study year abroad or do a placement. So this depends. So in the third year, you have these three options. Uh, for the study year abroad, of course, we have uh, partnerships with universities from other countries. Uh, specifically in Europe, we have Austria, Finland, France, Germany, Poland, and Spain, but also in other countries in outside Europe, such as Australia, Canada, China, Mexico, New Zealand, Singapore, South Africa, South Korea, and USA. And our students also um, travel to all these countries and the experience, the culture of uh, being in different country and also the education. And it's a good opportunity to learn the, the different language as well. Because of course, in those countries, they teach in their native language. Um, regarding placement, so we have, um, um, we don't have any agreement. Of course, in that case, you have to apply. We have, although we have a good careers service, which helps you with uh, your preparation of your uh, CV, cover letter, all the application materials that you need. And in the past, our students worked in all sorts of companies. Uh, so from finance to accounting mainly, uh, insurance companies, but even uh, media companies, such as um, Warner Brothers and Walt Disney, as you can see here. Um, so there is quite broad range of companies interested in hiring mathematicians. And getting experience in one of these companies is very good for your CV as well. And you also learn how the industry works. And it's like a, it's also a test for you to see whether you are actually interested in working in that area as a career um, in the future, in the long term. Um, uh, all our students who've been, um, who went on placement, they were quite happy um, with their experience. Uh, they all get to apply their, the mathematical skills that they, let, they, they develop in their first two years at the, at the university. Um, and they, um, contribute to the growth of the company they worked at. Uh, so it's overall a positive experience. So I would highly recommend that if you have the opportunity to do that. And of course, when you do that, you pay reduced fees and also you get paid. And so that's um, also very helpful. Uh, another, uh, another Thing that this helps is also developing relationships with other people. So networking is also a very helpful um, thing when later you will look for a job. And many students also receive job offers after they finish their placement, which then um, re removes the stress from looking for looking for a job later. Um, Right, so yeah, so this slide actually is what I just explained. Um, so it gives you um, an opportunity to test the field, see whether you like doing a particular job as a future career. You can re receive um, a job offer from the company, uh, which is great, would be ideal for you. Um, it's a good opportunity to earn some money and also apply your skills but also develop new skills working in a, um, in a new and uh, in a different corporate environment. Okay, so in the final year, again, we have um, different options. So the, the program becomes more open. Uh, so there are many options for you to choose to, uh, for courses for you. Uh, so there will be like courses in mathematics, obviously, um, if you like that part, uh, many courses in statistics uh, or in machine learning. So there's a broad range and I will invite you to have a look at our catalog to see the list of units. So we offer each semester about 40 courses as options. 
So it's quite a broad uh, choice. Uh, so apart from that, of course, uh, while you are here, you, we offer you support in um, in um, uh, during your studies. Uh, we have uh, student services, so where you can go and talk and um, uh, and receive any help with um, if you have any issues with the living at Bath. Um, any uh, so there you can discuss anything you want with them. We have a mental health team. So again, because being at university can sometimes be stressful, um, you know, have to do well in the exams, you have to study regularly, and it's a difficult program. So obviously, we want to have uh, let you know that we have support available for you. We also have a personal tutor sy system. So I am the personal tutor, tutor of 20 students, uh, where I see them regularly and discuss their progress give them advice about options depending on what they like uh, so what units should they take in the future I provide reference letters in case they want to apply for a, a job or a placement job um, I, uh, I I discuss with them how their life is going um, experiences at the university because being at the university is not just about studying it's about also networking and having other experiences with your fellow students. Um, we have a director of the studies team that oversees the teaching of the courses and uh, tries to give a, maintain a uniformity for different courses so that our policy is um, always the same and deals with um, any um, situations that might arise, such as, for example, right now we are teaching remotely and uh, because of the lockdowns we have. Um, and so all uh, we receive uh, help, the students receive help also for from the director of studies, how to study properly um, and how to, for example, um, uh, solve uh, the answers for the exams and all these things, which are, of course, very important for you. And finally, we also have a team which we called MASH, which stands for Mathematics and Statistics Help. Um, and that offers support for um, during um, when you have an exercise, for example, and you want to, you don't know how to solve it, then you can get some help from them. Or if you have any questions on the theory or on the lectures, then so uh, you will have somebody to help you understand or explain this again to you. Uh, so it's there uh, as um, offering help for any academic related issues. Um, now, so this is a program that is starting um, this um, uh, next year. And so these are the entry requirements for 2021. But of course, this will stay the same for the future. They might be revised depending on how the program goes and the quality of um, the students, of because of course we want to have um, good quality students. And so we want you to do well in the program, but also we expect from you to have um, um, to study well. And of course, coming with um, showing that you can do that program. Uh, so the, Entry requirements depends on whether you take further maths or you don't take further maths. Uh, if you don't take further maths, then of course we are uh, less relaxed. So with further maths, you we expect obviously to have an A star in maths anyway. Um, but if you take also further maths, then a B in further maths will be sufficient for us. If you do not take further maths, then the third A levels unit needs to be an A. So with, with further maths, we expect A star, A and B. Uh, without further maths, we expect A star, A and A. And of course, we have some other um, programs like a summer program here in Bath. Uh, we have um, or some other additional exams that you might take. So we can be more relaxed depending whether you do an ex extra program. 
uh, so uh, as you can see here. Um, if you want to study in our other programs, which are the mathematics, mathematical sciences, or mathematics and statistics, then we expect more because this is a more difficult program. And uh, so in particular, we want, we expect that you take further maths. And in that case, our offer is A star in maths as always, but, in the, but then we want you to have an A in further maths instead of a B uh, as in mathematics, statistics and data science. If you, uh, we also recognize that some students, for some students, it is not possible to take further maths. And so in that case, uh, we, we expect at least a further maths in AS level. Uh, but even if that's not possible, then we expect some additional maths exams, such as uh, STEP, uh, Math or Kamua, if you are able to take this. So why should you uh, study this program? Well, um, this program is for you if you like mathematics, but also like the computer science aspect and working with real data and using that to solve real life problems. Um, as you know, this is a very important new LM, um, new area and is um, very has a high demand in industry. Uh, so we offer you a placement where you can practice your skills or a year abroad where again you can um, learn a new language, learn new culture, um, learn a new system and bring that back which develops new skills for you. We offer you a lot of options and um, especially in year one you can switch between our different programs but later on in the in the subsequent years you can also uh, choose the path that you like, if you like more mathematics, if you like more statistics, or if you like more the computing part of mathematics, statistics, and data science, then you can choose that path. It's up to you, and you will still get a good degree. Um, uh, it's a nice environment to work and study here, and of course live, so we, have, we offer you a lot of help and support uh, during your studies. Uh, you can um, living in Bath is um, nice. You have a, it's a small town. You can meet with your friends and interact, and it's a lot of activities for you uh, to do outside studying as well. And we have a very good record of graduate employment. So most of our students uh, get work in um, finance or accounting industries. Uh, some works are, some work as uh, data science scientists or statisticians. Uh, so many of our graduates uh, have um, uh, done, uh, have been successful in their career uh, so far. Uh, so, and the university of course is highly regarded among employers. And we have a good uh, careers help service that will help you develop your application package and support you during your app uh, applications in when seeking for employment. Um, okay, so that's all I wanted to say and thank you very much for um, your attention. Uh, this is my email here. So if you have any questions about the program, about what I said, feel free to send me an email and I will reply to you as soon as possible. That is fantastic. Um, Listen, we really appreciate yep. the presentation. It was lovely. Um, a few questions for you as well if you could stay with us for a little longer that'd be really great um just want to say a few things as well just based on that i, I think you can see bath is a very popular destination university wise for alice smith students and i think you've got quite a lot of the pastoral side of it there um that comes across you'll be very well looked after i think i think that's one of the reasons why it's always been such a popular choice for our students both as, as indicated by the fact it's such a nice town nice campus but also there's this extra care taken of students going there. So I think that came across well 
and it's important because for us guiding people going to university that side of it is important getting the right course and the academics and everything so i'm glad that came across really well in the presentation just one other thing that got mentioned there was just about additional maths tests and so there were a few listed there things like the mat step tumor um, we offer additional support for that and we have an external tutor that specializes in those tests so if, if that's something you think you might need help with or just more information about do let myself and this mapeteer know we can we can guide you a bit if we think you might need to take those tests as you see at bath it's um, an optional thing that may be used for certain courses some other universities is a mandatory part of their um, assessment and it may be that obviously if you're applying to five for the UCAS system you may be that you are also if you're applying somewhere as good as Bath that you're also applying to other very good universities that are demanding that you take this test. So do, if you have any questions about additional mathematics tests do let us know. Okay so we've got a few questions from, um, from the people uh, who have been watching this. Um, uh, one of them was just I think on some of the terms that are being used. So um, we wanted a bit of clarification I think on the difference between a data scientist a data engineer and a data analyst. So we've got three roles potentially there. Um, what, is, what, what can we say is the difference between those three different things, do we think? Yeah, obviously the name suggests there is not a big difference, right? Um, I think those are different roles that you get in industry. I, academically, uh, I haven't heard um, data analyst or data engineer um, talked much. Um, I will say that um, analyst is more like in a, working in a business, so related is a specific um, specific area of data science related to business applications. Uh, so data engineer, I will say, is the same as data science. Sounds very um, very much the same because, of course, data engineer means that you develop new things. Uh, new theory, new uh, applications, and this is what data scientists are. So um, I wouldn't say there's much difference between data scientists and data engineer, but analyst is more about, I think, the business part. Um, right. So it's a special right. I hope, focus. I hope that comes across so you can see that where, where the difference lies in that thing. Um, but another question, um, which was, this comes up actually all week we've been doing a lot of computer related ones, so software engineering, computer science from various universities. Uh, and obviously, I think a lot of people would just like to know the type of experience, type of students that you want coming in. And often that means how many, how much kind of programming or coding experience students have beforehand. Is it, is it a certain yeah. level of expectation that this is something students have been taking up in their spare time? What, what, what's your opinion of this? Yes, of course. I mean, any any type of experience you have, that will be obviously helpful. And it will be good if you put that in your personal statement when you apply at Bath, because of course we take this in, into consideration when we make decisions. Uh, however, we do not assume that you have any experience in programming. We do start from, um, we do expect that you take, of course, the mathematics A-levels, and um, you have a good mathematical um, background. And so that's the only requirement that we expect uh, that you uh, we expect from you. Uh, um, so reading programming, we will teach you, I mean, it's a, it's a different, there are all different types of programming. There is the programming where you, you simply do calculations and then there is the programming part where you write code that, um, from fundamental um, uh, as uh, using fundamental uh, commands, um, and so we do, we do not expect that you have that. So because we teach that from the in the first year, uh, so yeah, so we don't we don't need you to have any programming experience. Okay, thank you very much. That's a really good answer. Okay. One thing I, 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 we were just looking at is we, you had all those brilliant kind of uh, work experience opportunities in terms of obviously the, the year in industry. Um, and obviously you also spoke a bit about what people go on to do afterwards. I think it's quite interesting, certainly in terms of, kind of transferable skills that people understand what you might be doing. So I think for things like working for a big bank or working for a company like Google, I think, I think it's quite understood what, where the data and the data scientists mm -hmm. come in. But for a company like Disney, or I think you had a, a football club on there, Southampton or something like that, 
Yes. But for places like that, where, where, where's the data science coming in? For, for something that's more entertainment led or in other perhaps less obvious industries, what, what's the power data scientists use? Yeah, that's a very good question. I, I actually talk to the students who go on placement and find out what, and try to learn what they're doing and how useful their skills, mathematical skills were in those companies. So um, many companies, I mean, all, almost all companies uh, work with data. And so they are looking for students to help them organize and analyze the data and detect and try to see any, whether there are any trends in the usage in, in their data. So for example, in Walt Disney, they have uh, some applica uh, mobile applications and they uh, want to monitor the usage of their mobile applications. Um, if there are any uh, popular applications, any trends, um, and how this um, uh, can, so how they can use this, of course, to maximize their profits. Uh, so these this types of things. Uh, in sports, uh, they're used uh, when they analyze uh, players' uh, performance. So a, a sports team might, um, um, when they scout different players, they want to see how um, they can fit with their existing team and how wh whether a player has potential. So these are types of data that also, um, although non-standard, they're still very um, important in these industries. So there are, of course, I mean, all sorts of applications you can imagine. Yeah, I think that comes across well. I think it just shows the, the diversity. But I think I sort of said at the start of it how important data has become. Again, obviously, if you use that um, the sport example there, football, I mean, 30 years ago, just wouldn't have been a thing that was done, or certainly not in any way like it is now, and to the level of sophistication that's done. So, you're seeing how yes. this kind of this way of looking at data is moving into lots of different areas. Um, I was just going to ask as well, what, what, what is your main area of research? Do you have a particular thing you, you enjoy teaching and, and researching? What, what's your speciality? It's quite a diverse course, as you pointed out. Yes, uh, so I teach um, third year um, uh, mathematics students. Uh, I mean, uh, my specific area is statistics and more specifically spatial statistics. So when you observe data at different locations in, in, in a geographical area, such as, for example, weather. Um, and so what I teach is um, more advanced level statistics in a, um, which involves uh, from when the uh, relationships between the different variables are not um, so straightforward. So you have to be a bit clever when you analyze the data. So you try to figure out like different um, patterns, let's say, uh, non-obvious patterns in the data. So these are the types of things that we teach in the third level and uh, that I teach personally. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we're just going to move you on the just for the end to do to put them in. Um, I, I just something that gets used a lot, I think, in it by a lot of courses in terms of in, in a way of differentiating themselves from others. And you you used it, which was applied. So obviously, you spoke about mathematics as a course being uh, more of an academic course, and this being applied course. How does that work in practice? What what is an applied course? What what are you applying it to? How does it actually function in the classroom? Yeah, of course. I mean, we've got the pure aspect of mathematics, right? So we have the algebra and analysis, which are more, I mean, they were developed in the 18th um, century, most most of them, right? And, um, yeah. and even, of course, before that, right, in ancient Greece. Um, and these uh, types of mathematics are uh, there as a, uh, are very fundamental in in uh, more modern mathematics, uh, but not they don't have many applications apart of from the obvious applications such as, for example, computing the uh, areas and integral and these things. But of course, in modern industry and modern life, uh, math the mathematics that we use are more complicated. So we have more complicated equations, such as, for example, now we are, how the virus um, evolves, right? Or how the infection rates change. Uh, so this type of mathematics um, are, so this type of um, 
of um, of behaviors can be modeled using more modern mathematics using differential equations for example which are very difficult to solve but of course you see the more obvious applications of this type of mathematics and so this is what we call applied mathematics um, and they are they uh, these are not uh, the type of mathematics that you can solve by hands on a, on a paper uh, so you need a computer to be able to solve this type of equations and even more um, more uh, more um, more computerized let's say is the statistics part where of course you have so many data and it's impossible to see that with a pen and paper and write everything down and um, uh, but of course this type of mathematics they have real life applications and so they're still needed to to, so some solutions are still needed and they still need to be studied. Uh, and so the, um, uh, these are the type of mathematics that we call applied mathematics. Fantastic. I'm going to ask one more question. Now, it's one we ask quite a few people, um, particularly ones where they're in things that I think are quite new or, or you know, certainly uh, in, in um, uh, looking towards the future, which is that, you know, what would you see as the likely um, uh, jobs being created in this field? And indeed, just the, the likely applications for a data, a big data set going forward. And how do you see this developing as, as in the world over the next 10 years or so? Right. Yeah. So when I talk to our students who go on placement and I ask them what is the most useful part of um, our program that you found during your placement, they all say computing and statistics because in their career, at least in the very er in, in that such early stage in your career, you will have to work with data and you have to work with a computer. And so these are certainly useful skills to have. And in terms of how this could um, develop in the future, uh, well, obviously now we live in a world where data are important and are collected every second. Um, and so certainly the companies that, um, they seek mathematicians, they want them to have some data skills in their, um, on their belt. And so I will say that, I mean, this is one of the most important areas of modern time. And certainly there is going to be high demand for this. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna leave the talk there. It's Friday night, I think we, we can all um, get away and, and have a bit of, bit of time to ourselves. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, I think we've got um, Siobhan from Bath. So if, any, if anyone wants to stick around and just ask any questions on the technical side, he can ask answer those. But just say, Dr. Vangelou, thank you very much again for joining us and for your, for your insight. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, obviously, you're welcome back anytime. Yes, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I hope to see some of your students at Bath soon. Yeah. You definitely will. Okay? So thank you very much. Okay. Um.